I felt for thinking how Ireland had once been known as the island of many woods, cultivated in patches and overrun by tribes, always at war with the other. So it must have been in the 4th century when Gronia fled from Tara with her boat, her adventure, and mine to write Ireland's greatest love story in contemporary Yeats. The moment had come, and feeling like a swordsman that meets for the first time a redoubtable arrival, I reminded Yeats that in his last letter he had said we must decide in what language the play should be written. Not whether it should be written in English or in Irish, neither of us knew Irish, but in what style. The word soldier represents to us a man that wears a red tunic. An equivalent must be found in swordsman or fighting man. Hill is a better word than mountain. I can't give you a reason, but that is my feeling. And the word ocean was not known to the early Irish, only the sea. Permissions to begin by writing a dictionary of the words that may not be used and all the ideas that may not be introduced. Well, if one had the courage to put on a tramp's jacket and wander through the country sleeping in hovels, eating American bacon and lying five in a bed, one might be able to write the dialect naturally, but I don't think that one can acquire the dialect by going out for a walk with Lady Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> November 2006, 11 years since the execution of Ken Siorowiwa and eight Ogoni people protesting against Shell. We wanted to peacefully commemorate their life and work. We identified with their struggle. There was a large crowd, men, women and children. Oh, please, please let it go off peacefully today. There was mayhem. People yelling, batons flying. Four people were hospitalised. Countless others had injuries to their arms, legs and shoulders. I'll never forget it. The man I married was a good man. I'm just doing my job, I'm just doing my job, I kept telling myself. I laid down with other colleagues. There's a line of us. A line of defence facing this roaring and pushing and as the noise levels get lower my ears start to throb and then you know I couldn't hear my mantra. I tried but all I could hear was a din and I just wanted to roar back. I'm just doing my job, I'm only doing my job. I had enough of that roaring going on and on and on. I come home and I find you with your fancy man, your bloody fitness instructor, in my bloody bathrobe and slippers. Looking quite comfortable at the kitchen table, and no doubt looking to get into our bed. Explain that. I'd like to hear it. Oh, there is no explanation. Absolutely none. It's quite simple. He's my lover and has been this last six weeks. And he's been in <coughs> our bed, as you put it, quite a number of times. You bitch! How could you let him into our bed? Oh, very easily. I invited him. There hasn't been so much sex in that bed for ages and ages, I can tell you. Now, get out of here and take your bloody bathrobe and slippers with you. That's it, Paul. Pick up your petty possessions and piss off. And now, I'm ready. Ready for life. Well, he killed them. He has killed them. 
It is he who killed them. He it is who killed them. He did the killing. He is the killer. Warm wine is as bad as scalding tea. The ice, though melted, will still do the job. Cheerio, the queen caruses to your fortune. Do not drink. The ice, the ice. Are you poisoned? Yes, too late, as they say. <laughs> Past tense, Axel, my son, as they said. Past tense, present perfect, has been. Past participle, gone. Goodbye, mother dear.